Hi, this is Jordan from Big Snatch Off-Road, and you're listening to the Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Jeep Mama, Josh, and Tony. So sit back, strap in, and And brace brace yourself. yourself. This episode of the Jeep Talk Show is brought to you by Extreme Terrain, your authority in late model Wrangler parts and accessories. Stay tuned to later in this episode to learn how you can win a $3,000 shopping spree for your Wrangler from ExtremeTerrain.com. Holy crap, three grand. Gee whiz. Woo. You could buy two Cherokees with that. No. I get fender flares. <laughs> hey, you know, it doesn't matter if you've got a Jeep, you want a Jeep, or you've never driven anything but a Jeep. Uh, this show is for you. Josh, Tammy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about Jeeps. Well, Tammy, uh, the holiday season is upon us. Are you ready for it? I think so, Tony. All my shopping's done and all my trees are up. What else <laughs> is there? Snow? <laughs> Well, there, yeah, there's that. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of, are you ready for those salty roads uh, to bring back that rust? You know, that that goes along with the snow. Yeah, no, oh, no, 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 I don't want that. But I think I finally got a handle on that, so it shouldn't be an issue anymore. Fingers are crossed. Hey, Josh, are you even there? You've been kind of quiet. Can you tell us what's coming up on this episode? Well, Tammy, I am here, and as always, and as Tony would always say, I'm glad you asked. We've got (laughs) Gabe Warner from AeroX. He's back, and he may have a surprise for our listeners. You guys are going to have to stay tuned later in the show to find out more about that. This week in Jeep, we've got one of those feel-good Jeep stories to share, and what what one woman does with her winning Jeep will absolutely blow your mind, trust Uh me. And uh, Tammy's going to help us breathe a little bit better inside of our Jeeps in Wrangler Talk. And we've got some listener questions we'll be answering. We've got some tech talk. And we've got some Nikki G for whatever that's worth. <laughs> All that and more coming up on this week's Jeep Talk Show. Local Jeep news, national Jeep news, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. And This Week in Jeep is, of course, brought to you by Amazon.com. Hey, are you looking for a way to support the show? Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon and a small fraction from anything you purchase. Using that link, we'll go to the Jeep Talk Show. If you like what you hear or have gotten any benefit from what we do here, well, then please consider giving back. Hey, and thanks in advance. Well, I got a correction to make, folks. Last week, we broke a story about how FCA was going to be taking over an old facility in Detroit to make a new three-row Grand Cherokee. And as I had stated, that this facility used to make engines for Mack trucks. Although this facility was an engine manufacturing facility, it was not making engines for Mack trucks. The two plants, named Mack 1 and Mack 2, are built on Mack Avenue, hence the names, (laughs) and my confusion in researching the story before the show. Listener Jerry was kind enough to point this out and help me make the correction. So, thank you, Jerry. I'll add that he, uh, at the end of his message, he said, na 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 boo boo yeah <laughs> no, he has been sending us uh, some great pictures though yes. of uh of some jeeps I, right outside the fca facility too i believe they got uh they got some nice stuff set up there oh beautiful they've got uh like uh, 64 red jeeps all out there That wasn't that many and one of them was a truck <laughs> oh, it was Lord. clearly a ram but whatever <laughs> exaggeration <laughs> they did have a big fat uh, blow up santa in the back of it uh, with a whole string of jeeps uh, uh you know kind of laid out like the reindeer so that was kind of cool i'm glad to see that uh the Jeep actually, you know, celebrates Christmas. Indeed. And it, not, uh, it's not, know, not, not just a, you know, happy holidays sign out. Front. Exactly. It's not necessarily, I mean, I don't actually see Christmas out there, but the red, the green, uh, the, the lights, you, you, you know, come on, Santa. Yeah. You get yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I mean, it's not the word Christmas, but in the politically correct environment that we're in, it's, it's nice to see that, uh, you know, they have the same sediments that we have. Well, this is also something nice to see. Now, we've uh, heard about this on the on the horizon uh, for years and years now, and, uh, well, it's finally inching closer and closer, little by little, Why? to production. But what will it be, and what are we talking about here? Well, it's the first Jeep hybrid that's going to be going into production, and the first hybrid Jeep is going to be launched in early 2020. And reports are saying that it's going to be in the form of a new Renegade. Unfortunately, those same reports are saying that it won't be a U.S.-made vehicle either. But currently, the Fiat Chrysler Melfi plant in Italy is being readied for the production run. 
and pre-production copies will be made in 2019 before the final versions in 2020. Oh, and by readied, I mean the plant is is getting a 200 million euro makeover and retooling to make all this happen. Pretty big deal, actually. The subcompact Renegade PHEV, as it's being called, a, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, will have a rear-mounted electric motor for the rear wheels and retains the normal front-wheel drive gas motor. Details about the PHEV Renegade's performance are scant at this point, but one speculator is saying that it might be similar to the Pacifica Hybrid. Comparing the two vehicles side by side, we see an immediate curb weight difference, which will have a massive effect on critically important figures like torque availability and, of course, range. Adding a battery and electric motor to a small SUV with established sales like the Renegade is likely going to be a good move for FCA. The gasoline-based currently, model currently starts at around $18,000 and rises up to about twenty-seven dollars once fully loaded. And according to Edmonds, well, the current models of the Renegade get on average about 27 miles per gallon. With the plug-in hybrid, I can see those numbers going up substantially. You know, I don't know about you guys. I'm glad to see that this isn't going to be on the Wrangler, the, the JL. I, you know, the, the Renegade kind of makes sense. It's a, a subcompact. It's a light, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So... Hybrid uh, kind of sounds good for the Renegade, but but for me personally, I'm not really interested in a hybrid vehicle unless it's impulse or warp drive. No, <laughs> that kind of oh, that kind of hybrid I can right. get, get behind. Actionless thrusters. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, that'd be great. But I mean, hey, you know, it's all got to start somewhere and uh, starting with the smallest fleet in the vehicle. Well, that's n- really not a bad place to go. Uh, cut your teeth, kind of figure out what you're doing and maybe move things up into the uh, into the model lines a little bit more. And my, as, we, as we know, uh, other models, not Jeep, uh, but under the FCA umbrella are obviously uh, they've had that hybrid technology for a little while now. But retooling the facilities um, in the Jeep manufacturing plants to get that technology moved over to the Jeep platforms. Well, that requires a lot of engineering and a lot of R&D, which we are going to see come to market here uh, starting in 2020. So, very interesting now, stuff. Aren't these batteries, um, like, really not good for the environment? No, they're not. Uh, it's, it's true. Because isn't uh, there actually, a I mean, city you, over in, God, my son was telling me this, there's a city where they mine or l- whatever lithium, you call lithium yeah. Lithium-wania? Lithium-wania. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the people in this town like live to maybe thirty. I forget what it is, what town it is, but that's, it's. That's, I, I wouldn't doubt Russia. it. I mean, the the, <laughs> the the technology, everything that goes into making a an electric vehicle is absolutely horrendous for yeah. the environment. Right. I mean, from the manufacturing facilities that require gigawatts of voltage to actually run the assembly lines, and, and we're talking about the smelting plants to 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 actually melt the metal, and you know form the metal and all that sort of stuff. And then we get into the actual battery aspect of it, which, yes, mining that lithium ion and and actually making the batteries, producing all of those chemicals and whatnot, it is horrendous for the environment. So all of you Prius owners out there who think that you're actually <laughs> doing something for the environment, well, you are. It's just you're doing the wrong thing. Wrong doing, thing. doing the same you're, thing we're doing, but sometimes worse. You're killing worse. a whole city. So, yeah. uh, Josh, any kind of I, I get the kind of the feeling since they're going to be making this uh, in a uh, not in the United States that mm-hmm. really the market for this vehicle is going to be more in uh, the uh, in the European pl- um, uh, uh, theater than it what it would be here. Especially, I think it was yesterday I got uh, gas for a dollar seventy nine nine a gallon. So. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Still paying get, almost three bucks a gallon you or get, more in some places. But do you get that feeling that it's kind of be kind of be made over there because it's really going to be used more over there? Well, now if you remember when the Renegade first was first came on the scene, it was debuted as a global Jeep. This is going to be the vehicle that Jeep produces around the world for the world. You know, versus you know the Wrangler that is primarily produced in the United States. Uh, that is primarily, even though it is you know shipped and, and made in other countries, but is primarily a U.S. vehicle. Now, the Renegade is a world vehicle. This was really the platform that has set Jeep into uh, global domination, nearly <laughs> uh, as far as you know automakers go. Uh, starting with this platform, really, it, it makes the most sense, you know, ultimately, uh, just because of what it is and how well that it's done. But you know, is this a global move? Is this more of a United States move? What I see out of this, Tony, more than anything, is really going to be a price point. And when I see that this vehicle is going to be made outside of the U.S., but it is going to be offered here in the U.S., but it is a U.S. vehicle, 
um, platform. Well, I see massive tariffs. I see big price tags right. on this. This is not going to be an eighteen thousand dollar rig, and I, I expect it to be in excess of even twenty seven thousand for the limited, the current limited version of the Renegade. So. I, I am, am really forecasting a, a rather high price tag on this vehicle, even though the you know the gasoline version is uh, is priced well into the entry entry model range. Well, they are a very small vehicle, but uh, shipping overseas, you got to use at least mm-hmm. two two stamps to get it. Uh, well, right, uh, at least for this envelope. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys know that I like uh, feel-good Jeep stories. I, I try to uh, weasel them in, uh, in as often <laughs> as I can. But, uh, well, uh, this one is um, right around a well, perfect time for the season. It's, I call it the gift that keeps on giving. And trust me, you're not going to need a round of Valtrex to get rid of this one. In the spirit of the holiday season, I found this little gem to help warm your guys' hearts and maybe instill a little bit more faith in humanity as well. Now, a Jeeper, well, a, a good human, I'll call her that, Tracy Sklarin of uh, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, bought a $20 raffle ticket earlier this fall to benefit the Island Rec Center, a local nonprofit uh, agency there and, uh, on the island. The grand prize was a pristine, nearly showroom floor quality 1995 Jeep Wrangler YJ. And you guessed it, she won it. What happened next is something that any of us would, have, would not have an easy time wrapping our heads around. She, she gave it up. Now, before you jump to conclusions that this gal has gone bat s crazy and has clearly gone off the deep end because who in their right mind would turn down a free Jeep, especially one in as amazing condition as this one is. However, as we get into the details of this story a little bit more, we find out more of a generous heart is at play and less of a clouded mind. When Tracy won the prize, she immediately passed the gift to a coworker of hers who didn't have a vehicle to drive at all. Obviously, when Tracy told the co-worker that she was going to buy a ticket and that if she won, she'd go ahead and just give the Jeep to him, his words, it's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and by any other measure, he would have been right. But the spirit of Christmas was floating around that day, and as luck would have it, Tracy won the raffle. And now Brandon Spann of Hilton Head has a bright red Jeep that, well, might as well be brand new. Sklarin had bought the raffle ticket, then promptly forgot about it, as many of us would do when we enter contests. The drawing has, uh, was to be held in September at the Jeep Island Gathering of Jeep Enthusiasts, but that got blown out, of, uh, out by Hurricane Florence, and it was totally off my radar, Tracy said. Dave Peck, owner of a Low Country Backyard restaurant, organized the Jeep Island event. And for two years, his business has bought a used Jeep to raffle off at this event, with proceeds going to a local nonprofit rec center. Now, here's where things get a little bit funny. Tracy said when she called her coworker Brandon Spann with the good news, the guy who said she had promised to, you know, to give the Jeep to if she had won, he asked who she was. <laughs> he <laughs> who had no is idea. This? <laughs> who, he had no idea who the woman was and had clearly also forgotten about the raffle. There's got to be a catch, he said. He, he, he was thinking. Nobody's going to give me no Jeep, he thought. Sklaren and her husband picked up Spann and took him to Dave Peck's house, where the keys and the title to the Jeep were turned over to him, free and clear. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? I mean, would, would, we all own Jeeps. Now, this, this lady didn't own a Jeep. Uh, she clearly is well off and, and uh, has vehicles of her own, isn't into Jeeping, but was doing a good deed. Now, uh, for any of us who are Jeep enthusiasts, we probably wouldn't be as kind-hearted. Now, I don't know about you, but... Uh, uh, I would have probably taken the Jeep and kept it, but uh, you know that's just me. It'd be really hard, especially uh, it being uh, YJ, and I, I don't know. It'd be really hard. I guess if you've got a bunch of them in your driveway already, mm-hmm. it just I'd have to drive it around a little bit first, a little bit, right? <laughs> At least a little bit. <laughs> and it is red, Tony. So there's yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get rid of a black one and keep the red one. <laughs> Tammy, what do you no. think about this? <laughs> Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out. So she just gave away. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, like that's just who does that? Exactly, gets, and that's, that's I mean, that's point. pretty much what this guy I know, was I'm saying like too. Reading, nobody's going to give you no Jeep. He thought, <laughs> right? So I'm reading through the story again, and I'm like, wait a minute, did I hear that right? No, <laughs> no, you don't. You don't give away a Jeep. That's wonderful. It's a wonderful well, story. The, no, the, it, the is. Guy it who, is. The guy who was uh, organizing the whole event, uh, he even was, uh, you know, because this the the transaction took place at his place. You know, that he, you know, is where he right. had the jeep and everything, and and he was just like, you know, thinking to himself, "Lady, are you sure you know what you're doing here?" <laughs> you know, right? And and it really didn't it, even uh, in the story. It, it it goes on to say, like, even she was thinking, you know, what am I doing here? 
you know, I'm giving away thousands of dollars and uh, it, this, this Jeep was valued in excess of $5,000. Right. So, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, that's, that's something else here. It's, but a, a great little Christmas time story. I love seeing a uh, charity, especially when there's a Jeep involved. That's a wonderful story. Now, this one, uh, really, to both of my uh, co-hosts here, this is more of just um, uh, uh, us sort of talking shop here. I, in, in searching uh, through for stories this week, I, I came across a story um, that was authored by somebody who we've had here on the show. And it was actually on uh, Jalopnik's website. And we uh, it was written by uh, David Tracy, a guy, a uh, jeeper, in fact, uh, who we've had on the show and interviewed. And he um, found the story, uh, wrote the story, about some Germans who had discovered a building where military jeep her- hoods were used to repair a ceiling after World War II. And in fact, as we are recording this ep- yeah. this episode, during the interview, we got an email from Jerry, who I had uh, talked about a little bit a little bit ago, uh, who had uh, sent us an email and on a correction. He had actually emailed me uh, the, the the headline of this story, and I had already had it in the in the show notes and everything. So this is this is a story that's getting some incredible traction and already getting a lot of buzz in the Jeep world. Um, we'll, we'll see if we can't get uh, David Tracy back on the show. David, if you're listening, I, I know I don't have your contact information personally. I know that Tony does, but if you're listening, reach out to us. Let's set something up. We want to have you back on the show and uh, talk about this awesome story about military jeep hoods being found to repair a ceiling in Germany after World War II. Really, really cool. You know, Josh, I'm glad you brought this up because, uh, uh, you know, we, we're interviewing uh, uh, Gabe over at uh, AeroX tonight, and he was a past interviewee, just like David mm-hmm. was a past interviewee. And, That's right. Uh, if you go back to episode 323, you can hear that interview with David Tracy of Jalopniks. And uh, that was a great story about something similar, uh, also kind-hearted Jeeper, because uh, he went to go pick up a, oh gosh, like a two five hundred dollars something like that uh, Cherokee uh, that wouldn't That's run. Right. And he's oh, right. Yeah. And he wound up staying uh, a, a couple of days or at least overnight because he, he stayed it, and, he? and helped. Or yes, yeah. He, yeah. he stayed and helped uh, the college student. Uh, fix the problems that uh, he was having with it. I think it was the the flywheel bolts. Uh, if I, I remember flex right, flex plate, yeah, yeah, flex plate bolt yeah, fl- or something ex- like that. Yeah, yeah. flex the flex plate exactly. And uh, he was able to get that Jeep back up and running, and uh, he left with uh, no Jeep but a uh, a new friend. So yeah, uh, that was a great interview. It was a great story. Uh, but uh, episode three twenty three, we got a lot of gems in our uh, back catalog and you know we're coming up to episode 365 so you know what that means that means you could listen to an episode a day for an entire year never hear the same thing twice well (laughs) Uh, yeah Uh, top five uh (laughs) the top five things you hear on the bat on the pack of shows right exactly Well, hey, if you guys have a news tip like uh, one of these, for instance, or if you have a response to any one of our stories, be sure to let us know by phone or by email. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out how to reach out to us. And coming up here in just a little bit, an interview with Gabe Warner from AeroX Industries. And now it's time for some Radio Com Tech. Hey, boys and girls, we're back with another ham radio segment, and we're going to be talking with Josh. Uh, you also know him as Hosh a uh, licensed operator since 2007 as KI6NAZ, and uh, he's a very enthusiastic ham, likes experimenting with all facets of amateur radio. And you can find Josh on social media, on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as Hosh uh, Josh is probably best known for his fun and informative videos on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash H-O-S-N-A-S-I. Uh, hey, and if you want to ask Josh questions directly, just do a search for Ham Radio Crash Course. Josh, thanks for being back with us uh, this week. All right, this week we're going to be talking about where do I start? You know, Josh, I want to get a ham radio license, but I don't know how to get started. So the good news is is once you know a little bit of information, it's really easy to get your license. So we put out a series of videos over on the Hashnasi YouTube channel. We did all the chapters in the book that Gordon West produces on getting your license. So there's some technical details there, a lot of how-to, a lot of safety, some FCC license stuff. But really, the test questions are very easy. There are some other websites I'll mention, the ARRL, Alpha Romeo, Romeo Lima. Uh, they have a website for where to find a licensing location because it's a test you have to take in person and training sessions if they exist in your area. And those are usually put on by local ham radio clubs. 
So another good way to get started is find a local ham radio club. And you can use the ARRL website to find those as well. And that'll give you a great starting point. And what I recommend is you do a little bit of everything. You find a club, you watch my YouTube videos, you watch all kinds of YouTube videos. You find something that makes you interested and then you just keep going. And eventually you'll take your test and you'll be a ham. From that, I just have one question, Josh. What if you don't have a local club? I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that either can't find it or don't know of one. Is there any other way about getting a license? Ooh, so that's that's a really tough question. Uh, the The answer is yes, there is. But the FCC, at least in, we're talking about the United States here, other countries have different rules. Right. The FCC pretty much mandates that the people who offer the test, the people who give the test, the VECs as they're called, they have to be able to like watch you via video camera, like a live stream kind of thing. And that's really up to the VECs and the club or whatever that's putting that on. There's very few instances of someone taking their amateur radio license test in a, in a format like that. Almost all testing is done in person, usually related to a club or somewhere close to a club. So generally people drive out to a club to get their license and then I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, that's great. I didn't even know that you could do the the streaming thing. But again, it's up to the examiner to, to make that call or not. But uh, it's nice to know that it's a possibility. Yeah, we have uh, one person on the Ham Radio Crash Course on Discord who has some health problems. They're kind of uh, stuck in a bed for a while. And they've actually reached out to a local club to try and make that work. And it's been difficult making headway in that area. All right. This week, we found out where do I start. Next week, we're going to find out what do I study. Josh, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, coming up in Tech Talk, we'll be answering a listener question about roll bars and sport cages. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Oh, you most certainly are, you lucky listener, you. And if you didn't know about the 4x4 Radio Network already, well, I encourage you to head over there right now. Just head over to 4x4radionetwork.com, all one word. And uh, you're going to see a bunch of stuff there. It's all podcast, all audio, and it's all off-road. And we've got something for anybody, regardless of what you drive. We've got something for, well, you know, we've got a 4 by 4 podcast there. The Center Steer podcast is there as well. Trail Chasers is back and in putting out some new episodes. And we've even got the On the Trail podcast as well. A little something for everybody over there. Once again, 4x4radionetwork.com. Go check it out. Yeah, Cody and his uh, brother-in-law are really cranking them out. Uh, love seeing that. Love hearing more from uh, Trail Chasers podcast. And, you know, of course, Dan's back uh, from Alaska and a little bit more stable uh, 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 work uh, duties every day. So uh, they're uh, generating more uh, uh, episodes as well. So really happy to see that. Shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut Man, up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. Shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler talk. It's time for G Mama. So, um, I know you all know, Tony and Josh, that I have a YouTube channel and I do a weekly video. I call it Jeep Mama's Garage. And I like to do, you know, like my top five or some how to's or I share my off roading videos. Well, this past week, um, I usually post them up on Sundays. So last week's topic was the Jeep black hole. Five things I didn't know when I bought my Jeep. Now, um, typically, well, first, the five things that I didn't know when I bought my Jeep, and you can watch it to get more details on this, was, you know, that there are drain plugs in the Jeep. Um, you can drive a Jeep without your steering stabilizer. Um, that there's a firewall in your Jeep and oh, I hooked up my aftermarket lights to the wrong spot on the battery. I didn't know there could be a wrong spot. And I talked about the black hole in my Jeep. And this is, well, first of all, I got tons of responses to this video. And what surprised me one on this video is typically when I some I post a video, the views for like maybe a week can be anywhere from 300 to 1,000 for a week to two weeks. This one has been, let's see, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's been up for five days and I'm already over 5,000 views, which I don't know why this one is. But anyway, which means I'm getting tons of comments. And I just wanted to share with you 
I learned something else because of this video that I had no idea about. And, or I think this is true, we'll see. So one of the responses, um, I found the black hole after learning Jeep does not install cabin filters at the factory. What the heck? Gotta love YouTube, found a video on how to install it and discovered all that room behind the glove box. So that's the black hole. I kept losing stuff in my glove box and I'm like, where is it all going? And somehow I figured out that you can take it out. And there's this huge area behind it that I had no idea. And I found my sunglasses and napkins and some Jeep talk show stickers and a purple D ring. You know. Yeah, it, it, exactly. <laughs> never, um, never a pair, but one sock. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's where all the dryer socks are going, folks. <laughs> anyway, so this YouTuber gave me that message about these cabin filters. I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? So I said, what are cabin filters? And so then another person responded and that it's an interior filter behind the glove box. And uh, I'm a little hesitant to believe people just because of <laughs> Tony likes to play these little Henway jokes on me. And I'm like, are these people? Because I have never heard of this before. Yes. Um, and somebody else made a comment that I'm an pretty much an idiot because I didn't know about the firewall, but it is what it is. I'm not very familiar with vehicles or, or I wasn't. So anyway, I thought these people were playing a trick on me about these cabin filters, these air filters, but I'm pretty sure it's true. I'm still a little leery, but I think Josh made me feel a little better that yes, there are cabin air filters and it's a feature found on most late model vehicles. And what it does, it cleans the air that comes into the interior of your vehicle through the heating, ventilation, air conditioning system. And it catches the dust, pollen, and other airborne material that can make riding in a car unpleasant, particularly if you have allergies or respiratory problems. Now, it's recommended um, when a cabin air filter should be replaced. It varies by the manufacturer. Some say 12,000 miles or 15,000, others longer. And how often can depend on how much you drive and where you drive. So, you know, check your owner's manual to see their maintenance schedule. And if you drive in like heavy traffic, urban area that has really poor air quality, like, you know, LA, New York, you could probably replace the air filter annually or even more often. Could be true, like if you're out in the desert where there's lots of dust that needs to be filtered out. So there are signs that you need a new air filter. They are reduced airflow through your climate control system, such as when you crank up the fan too high and you get a noise. Um, another is persistent bad odors. Even if you don't have these warnings, however, you should have the air filter checked at least once a year. And you may be able to do it yourself. There's videos on YouTube, of course, that you can see how to do this. And most of the air filters are located behind the glove box and are easy accessible by freeing the glove box from its fasteners. And there should be instructions in your car owner's manual. Um, some air filters may be located under the dashboard, not easy to reach, or under the hood where the fresh air enters the climate control system. Now, there's air filters you can go online, and they're anywhere, you know, they're not that expensive. They could be more money at dealerships. So you could save money by replacing it yourself at a parts store or places like cars.com or rockauto.com and doing it yourself. And I haven't had a chance to go take my glove box out again to see if I can locate the air filters. But the guy who commented on my um, YouTube, thing, um, YouTube video said he didn't have any any filters in his Jeep. So I'm going to go check to see if there's any in mine and see if I need to replace them. So I learned something else five years after being a Jeep owner, actually 30 some years after owning a car, I had no idea there was even such a thing or everyone's playing a big trick on me. So. You, you know, um, they, they come in menthol now too. Oh, hush. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you know, it makes sense, though. I, I don't know anything about uh, air filters in, in new vehicles. I don't have a new vehicle. 
Uh, but uh, you buy uh, air filters for your uh, your home, and they make air filters that are specifically made to, to get rid of pollen and all the uh, or, or many of the allergies, uh, so that you know it makes your your quality of life better in your home. So it makes sense that it, any Jeep that comes with a, a seat warmer would also have an air filter. Exactly. <laughs> Most Wranglers don't have air filters. I know that my 99 Cherokee doesn't have an air filter. Most XJs uh, did not have uh, a, a cabin air filter as well. They are um, in the, the newer Jeeps. I believe the uh, the 2007 models and, and up uh, have have them. But uh, uh, yeah, if you've got a, a 97 to 2006 Wrangler, you're not going to have it. Chances are, Tammy, the guy who, who, who is uh, responding to you on YouTube or whatever, um, saying that his Jeep didn't, uh, you know, have one, uh, yeah, likely he's got one of those years. Right. And it's funny. Another person commented how you talk about the, the certain years. Um, one of the other comments was my Jeep is not a Jeep. It's a van. Anything over 2006 because yeah. Chrysler Fiat <laughs> and he's going uh, on and on. And I'm like, uh, I just ignored. I said, you have yeah. your own opinion, whatever. So <laughs> Anyway, all they but no, come that's, out of that's the that's good information out, there. and and definitely if you're if you're not familiar with this sort of thing, because you know most people are familiar with the air filter, you know the primary you know filtration device for the vehicle's air system, but that's you know that's for the motor, um, but you know right. you're breathing air as well, and and it wasn't until the last ten years or so um, that uh, they kind of got the idea that hey, you know when you're in your car, you're not exactly breathing clean air especially if you're stuck on an LA freeway, uh, you know, right. or you're, you know, you're, you're the 27th Jeep in line on, in an August, uh, trail run out on the mountain. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a little dusty. And, and you, good thing you mentioned that, you know, about like wheeling in the desert or in dusty climates and whatnot. In fact, a single day of dusty trails can ruin sure. your cabin air filter and your vehicle air filter. So, uh, if you're, if you wheel a lot in dusty climates, um, and you've never changed that air filter and you've got a newer Jeep, well, or any other kind of vehicle for that matter, you might want to consider taking, a, taking Tammy's advice and checking it out. Give you dark colored boogies, too. Oof. Oh. <laughs> Tammy, I'm glad but. you mentioned the, the firewall. Uh, let me give you a little, uh, mainly for the listeners out there, but uh, let me give you a little quick little way of thinking about that. Josh, Josh, you can jump in here, too. The firewall is meant to protect the passengers. Uh, the driver and the passengers of the vehicle. So anything that's hot or could catch on fire or an electrical thing that could get very hot and catch on fire or uh, a hose that could pop, uh, like for the engine cooling system, that firewall is meant to not only protect you from from fire, but all those baddies uh, that can happen. So uh, and, and also, too, uh, high uh, current electricity. Uh, that's why we recommend using relays Whenever you're switching off, uh, switching on and off uh, high current items like uh, uh, the, the older lights, the LEDs aren't so bad, but the older uh, incandescent lights used to be, you be quite high in the amperage, and you really didn't want those those amps just right there at your knee on a switch that you could actually you know uh, get your your skin on. You put that relay uh, in front of uh, the firewall in the engine bay, and it helps protect you and the other folks in the cabin. So. That's what that firewall is there for, is to you know, separate you from the bad stuff that can hurt you. It also plays oh. a very critical role in your crumple zone, your front crumple zone, uh, for a forward-facing uh, impact. Uh, any kind of a, a accident where you're running into something or somebody's running into the front of you, um, that is the, the basically the final barrier uh, before the engine starts going into your lap. Um, so that's the, the, the firewall and the A-pillars are, are some of the strongest components in the vehicle. Uh, as it is the the first line of defense in an accident uh, to protect the passengers, so uh, a lot of engineering goes into that. And one of the the reasons I mentioned the firewall and the things I didn't know is I had to wire up my aftermarket lights, my Raxium oh. aftermarket lights, and the direction said you had to put your cable through the firewall, and I'm like, what the heck? Where, you know, I There's know no what a wall fire. of fire on my Jeep. It's <laughs> right. perfectly fine. Right. <laughs> Uh, you know, I you know I know what a firewall is on the computer anyway, so mm -hmm. you know hackers can't get in. So I kind of, but I was like, where is it? And I'm like looking all over, and I'm like, so I go on um, uh, the internet, and I'm like, uh, actually, I think I went on a forum that. Oh forum. no. <laughs> yeah, but no, somebody was really nice, and he, him, and I are still friends to this day. He's like, don't panic. 
just go, you know, take this thing off and do that. And actually, if you check out my video, if you don't know where how to get to the little hole where you can put the cables through, um, you can go on to my video on, on YouTube and see where it is. You just pull the Yes, yeah, everybody go and look at Tammy's yeah. video of how to yes. hook something to the little hole. Find yeah. the little yeah, there hole. you go. I need the gong sound that <laughs> I, I can play on the just thing. Thinking dong. About the gong. If you want to put something in the hole, go to my video. Go watch my video. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> good times. Anyway. Good times. Oh, you well, know, good, lots of good information there. You know, yeah. you were mentioning uh, the views on your, your YouTube videos and how it just, just doesn't bragging. make any sense. Just bragging. I know. I, I just, saw, <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been watching the YouTube videos. You know how you kids like doing that. And <laughs> I saw this one YouTube video and I've, I've just kind of started noticing the number of downloads. I saw a YouTube video, seriously, how to find the bad light bulb in your string of Christmas lights. It had oh, over a million views. It just doesn't, it boggles my mind. <laughs> it does, you just never know. Uh, you, you people you will know. watch anything, won't you? I know. <laughs> Anyway, we digress. Hey, folks, coming up later in the show, speaking of digressing, it's Nikki G. Be nice to Nikki G. It's Christmas. King of the digression. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, we love getting feedback from all you folks out there, and each and every one of you Jeepers means a lot to us. And when you guys uh, respond to us and you reach out and you interact with us, well, it just means the world to us. And, uh, well, we got some reviews, and you guys can leave us a review any number of ways uh, on Facebook, in fact, on YouTube, uh, even on, uh, well, you, uh, iTunes, uh, Stitcher Radio, any of those places you can find the Jeep Talk Show. Typically, you can find a way to leave us a review. Uh, and we got one uh, from Facebook this week. Uh, we have a Robert C. who recommends the Jeep Talk Show. In fact, you can actually recommend something on Facebook now, and we got a recommendation from Robert C. And he also says, great information, cool tips, and amusing. Don't miss it. I think, he was, I think he was more excited, yeah. I think he was more excited <laughs> when he said, don't miss it. It was like, yeah, don't miss it. No, I'm was missing like, some punctuation there it. after the word <laughs> it. So I'm, I'm going to assume that uh, he was very lackluster. Uh, I'd like to assume otherwise. <laughs> thanks again robert c for recommending the jeep talk show on facebook and of course you out there listening to us if you have already friended us on facebook well be sure to check out the new recommendation feature and uh well give us a recommendation would you hello jeep talk show guys this is xj jake calling it's been a while but i've been listening to the podcast i'm listening to last week's podcast about tammy's adventure in new orleans Oh, geez. So, <laughs> apparently she got some beads, and apparently some guy made her lift both of her shirts up, shirt and bra. But my question to her is, did he lift up his bra when he lifted his shirt? Oh. Or did he not. <laughs> the second part, this fireball shot that you did, if you think that's bad, you should come to Minnesota. That's pretty sick standard procedure for taking a fireball shot and you should consider yourself lucky because normally we have to pay extra for that type that type <laughs> have a good one guys talk to you later good you hearing know, from he xj not, jake yeah he does not have a minnesota accent I it never, comes out. I'm, it comes out in the vowels a little yeah, bit every now and again. Yeah, you can kind of you can kind of hear it a little bit. But but I'm, yeah, you're I'm right. I'm not that uh, familiar with that, no, that part of the country. But it, I love hearing some from XJ Jake. Uh, it it kind of sounds like a Wisconsin accent to me. Yeah, yeah. Don't you know? Yeah, <laughs> I. That's where I was born in Minnesota. So I haven't had a fireball shot in Minnesota. So XJ Jake, I next time I go home, I will be doing that. But I'm not yeah. going to pay extra. No, some tells me you won't. <laughs> no, just give me the fireball. Yeah. So hey, should we? Because uh, Jake has been a longtime fan of the show, um, and he's called in a number of times over the years. Should we? Should we hook Jake up a little bit? I think so. Nah, I mean we can. We don't need to do anything from this guy. He'll call oh, in yeah. as, as many times as we want him to. We don't have to give him nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, uh, we'd love to uh, offer Jake a, a subscription uh, to uh, a really a beautiful magazine, uh, Jeep Action Magazine, uh, an annual subscription of six beautiful issues, uh, cover-to-cover information, and 
beautiful pictures about Jeeps. Did I mention the pictures were beautiful? They are just stunning. Uh, the, 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 the magazine talks about Jeeping and the Jeep lifestyle. And a big thanks to Bid Davidson, editor at the Jeep Action Magazine, for making this possible. So be sure and visit their website at jeepaction.com.au. The AU is in Australia because it is an Australian magazine, 15 years in publication, although it's maybe 16 by now. And a lot of big Jeep fans down there in uh, yeah. that tiny little uh, island called Australia. Oh. <laughs> I told you know it's funny Ben uh, Ben has started uh, riding his bicycle and he he posts up on Facebook about how many kilometers he uh, he rides his bike and I said you know don't daze off and uh, forget where you are and actually uh, roll off into the ocean because you're on that little <laughs> island. <laughs> Pretty sure he doesn't have to worry about that too much. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, a big thanks to Ben Davidson, uh, editor at Jeep Action Magazine, uh, making this happen for us and and uh, obviously for for you, our listeners. And uh, well, and now for uh, XJ Jake, who just got himself a what is it year long subscription? Absolutely, I, uh, Tony. Yeah, a one year long subscription, subscription. Six beautiful issues. Well, two weeks ago, we on uh, on episode 361, we interviewed Tom from Jeep Tech. You guys may remember that. If you haven't, go back, listen to episode 361. That was a good interview. Uh, and he was gracious enough to offer up our listeners a chance to win a great Innovations JK or JKU flagpole holder, a, a $130 value uh, from greatinnovations.com. Now, all you had to do was call in and leave a voicemail and nothing special and just, you know, name and say what you want, you know, that sort of stuff. And if you were the eighth person to do so, well... You'd win. Tony, do we have a winner to announce this week? We do. And I just want to oh, yes. run this point home one more time. <laughs> just because you think somebody's already called in doesn't mean they've called in. It, mm-hmm. We did not give this away in the week before the, the the following episode. So we announced on last week's episode, hey, we don't have a winner yet. You people call. And we've had several callers say, I really thought somebody would have won by now. Oh, I'm yeah. calling it. And yeah. I had to tell them. I'm sorry, you're the tenth caller. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were right. Uh, somebody did win. So uh, we'd like to say congratulations to Tyler C for being our eighth caller and winner of the Great Innovations JK Mount at gr8-innovations.com/slash/great8mount, and that uh, link will be in our show notes. So if you didn't win, you can always go over there and get you one. You know. You got to get one soon. I mean, uh, are they? Are there? I know there's Fourth of July. People love flying flags. Is there one for uh, for New Year's, uh, Christmas? Oh, probably. <laughs> I mean, everybody's flying flags for everything nowadays. But no, seriously. I mean, I've never seen more flags on Jeeps than I have this year. Uh, mm-hmm. So th- I mean, it's 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 more than just a fad. It's more than just a trend. This is it's something that belongs. And and really, a Jeep with an American flag is just like peanut butter and jelly. Come on. Yeah, very true. And you know, with your uh, Aero X uh, insert uh, for your uh, light bar, uh, like a flag or something, and a flag on the back, it'd be a perfect uh, combination. Oh, getting a little ahead of ourselves, but uh, yeah, I think you're onto something there, Tony. That's well, all right. We've we've interviewed uh, Gabe before. I know who he's got. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, congratulations to Tyler C. for being our eighth caller and getting that great Innovations JK flag mount holder. So re- really cool and uh, always great to, to produce another winner. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I just, I, it's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. Yeah, well, Johnny K wrote in this week, actually last week, and he asked us a question about roll bars. Well, kind of. He says, what's the difference between a roll cage and a sport bar? Which do I want for my weekend wheeler that is also a daily driver? First off, big thanks to Johnny for taking the time to ride in. We've been getting a lot of weekend wheeler rig questions in lately, and, well, that's just great. It's nice to see Jeepers staying active with their builds in the off months. First off, really, uh, Johnny, there's no real hard and fast official definition outlining specific differences between the two terms, which is partially why the terms are so confusing to some people. Generally speaking, a roll cage is a welded together or sometimes bolted in piece of equipment that was designed as a single unit. Even though it may have many bars and joints and parts to it, it all works together as a single unit. A sports bar, however, is a place where they have a lot of TVs and serve nachos and beer. No, I'm kidding. A sport bar is an add-on piece to an existing roll bar or roll cage, but people also use the term sport bar to refer to a factory roll bar with a single B-pillar hoop and spreaders that go towards the front or back or sometimes both. 
to further muddy the waters, we're going to confuse things even more, and say the sport bar is also a marketing term intended to deflect liability, as the term roll bar implies rollover protection. Many years ago, a fellow Jeeper of mine uh, had purchased a what quote, quote unquote weld in cage kit from a very well known brand that has a sticker noting the <clears throat> light bar was not intended for rollover protection. Nowadays, in our highly litigious society, the terms roll bar and roll cage carry a lot of liability with them for the manufacturer, which is why many avoid using the terms altogether. Trust me, go look it up. I'll give you a few minutes and just go, you'll see. No matter the term used, there are lots of opinions, uh, options rather, on the market, particularly for our beloved Jeeps. Some of them are very good and some are a little sketchy, so it's up to each wheeler out there to do proper research and comparisons and make a sound decision based on needs, usage, and of course, budget. One thing I need to point out though, and this is kind of important, that regardless of whether you go with an add-on piece or you go the full cage route, the same principles apply. In the case of our Jeeps, well, we generally like to operate on the assumption that any addition to the factory stuff is going to be better than nothing, especially for you pre-TJ guys out there. It goes without saying that welding cages are generally going to offer better performance, more protection, more features, and more design options than bolt-in systems. But that's not to say there aren't some manufacturers making some pretty good bolt-in kits. One such company is Rock Hard 4x4. Now, they've been on the scene for many years, and I know for a fact that their products have saved the life of an XJ driver or two over the years. That being said, the weld-in options may not be the best bet for you, and here's why. The strength and integrity of a weld-in kit is largely, if not entirely dependent, on the skills of the person doing the welding and the equipment that they're, used, that they're using. Imagine just how strong or reliable that cage is going to be when welded by Chucky, the tweaker down the street with the Harbor Freight welder and no mask. Well, just because it's welded doesn't mean it's strong. So unless you or a buddy of yours is a qualified, certified welder, it's best to have any roll bar welding done by a professional. After all, we're talking about the life of you and your passengers that might be at stake here. That's why a bolt-in cage might make more sense and be a little safer for the average do-it-yourselfers. Okay, let's get into some numbers. After all, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Here's what you want to look for. 1 and 3 quarter or 1.75 by 0.12 or 120 wall tu uh, DOM tubing. This is going to be suitable for most non-competitive roll cages. Pretty much means about 99% of us out there. Now, if you're into more competitive wheeling or you're starting a race team or you're into some serious off-road rock crawling, that type of stuff, well, then you may want to consider stepping up to a thicker wall DOM tube and maybe go in with a larger diameter and stick with the 2-inch two, two diameter stuff. Crossbars and triangulation is uh, critically important to overall cage strength, so the more the, of that that you see in the design, the better it is. Bolting a cage to the floor of your Jeep is better than no cage at all, but whenever possible, you want to look for a kit that ties the roll cage directly to the frame. Another suitable tie-in option, if that's not available, would of course be to something like an exo cage, or at least to other body armor. This is to help spread the loads encountered during a roll, God forbid there is one, and will result in less vehicle damage overall. But here's a question that many of you might be asking at this point. If cages are more or less meant for the extreme, worst case scenarios, or competitive wheeling, then why would your average weekend jeeper want a cage for a daily driver? Two words. Murphy's Law. Two more words. S happens, or more accurately, accidents happen, and they can happen just as easily with a weekend wheeler as they can with a hardcore trail rig. So here's my bottom line to Johnny and anybody else listening who's thinking about a cage or sport bar for their own Jeep. First off, forget ever using the term sport bar. It's just too damn close to sports bra, and that doesn't sound very Jeepy or off-roadish in the least little bit. Now, in all seriousness, just try and go with the best cage you can afford. Regardless of what it might be called or who makes it, ultimately, it's going to be better than nothing at all. And you're going to be safer off and more protected than you were before. Now, I think the uh, sports bra uh, bar mm -hmm. is supposed to be uh, a crumple zone. I mean, it's just to be able to protect you in a rollover, uh, but it's meant to be crumpled up. So if you put an honest-to-goodness roll bar in there that's uh, heavy, thick uh, DOM tubing, uh, you're you may be able to use it more than once. <laughs> really, that, that roll bar should not crumple. I mean, the, the factory one likely will. That's what I'm saying. Because the, it, because oh, it's, I'm it's, sorry. I thought you were saying the sports bar is the one that comes with the Jeep. 
No, no, no. I mean, uh, the, some t- the the early CJs uh, were sometimes referred to as a sport bar uh, because it was more or less just a roll bar and it had one triangulation support on it. Um, it really left a lot to be desired uh, and, and a lot of a lot of room for improvement on those. Um, but ultimately, you know, the the factory stuff is going to be what I would ca- consider the bare essentials, and it may or may not save your life, and it certainly. Uh, has a lot of room for improvement. And that's why you see so much aftermarket support for roll cages and sports bars and, 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 and other uh, aftermarket support to increase the strength of, of your cage or your, or your roll bar in your Jeep. Uh, very, very important. We hear about roll, uh, rollovers all the time. In fact, we've heard about a couple of deaths this year alone uh, from rollover accidents. Very tragic and ultimately preventable, especially by you know a small investment by you know putting in a sport cage or a roll cage of some kind uh, even if it is custom designed or an off-the-shelf unit, something is better than nothing in any case. Oh, and I will add that uh, not only is it important who welds it, but where you weld it. Because just because it's a weld-in, uh, a weld-in cage doesn't mean that it's on something that's nice and thick and sturdy. Uh, it'll uh, you know fold up on you if it's not put, put someplace. And, and that's especially true if you're driving something that is a, a unibody. Uh, that doesn't have a frame. That, that doesn't mean that somebody's going to weld it properly if you have a frame, because they may not hmm. weld it to the frame. <laughs> Sheet metal is only going to hold so much. Well, and I've seen these. I've seen uh, these these cages. You know, uh, that somebody bought a cage from a buddy who cut it out of his Jeep, and he more or less made it fit into his. Or I've seen these oh, off the yeah. shelf versions that more or less just bolt into the floor. And the moment that you rock that Jeep up against a rock face, well, guess what happens. You're going to start bending stuff. You're going to start, you know, uh, tweaking some metal. Uh, mounts are going to get shifted a little bit. You know, it's not going to be square anymore. It's not going to be straight. And if anything, it may even shear off a body mount. So, you know, it's critically important that if you are getting into some serious wheeling and there is a risk, I'm talking about, you know, serious risk of rollover because you are in massive off camber situations or in some serious terrain then you want to be looking at a very well triangulated uh, cage that ties into the frame because of the risks involved and because of what can happen if you do shift, flop, or roll over and end up on your side or worst case scenario on your top. So, Tammy, you're really active uh, taking your Jeep off-road. Have you thought about a, a roll bar or roll cage for yours? Yeah, I mean, it would be really nice. It would cost a lot of money and take a lot of downtime. Um to get it all installed and everything so maybe someday down the road but i still got i gotta pay it off first um i will i will yeah. say for for tammy and anybody else that may be in her situation where you've got a, a a jeep that you know you're doing some modifications to it's not quite paid off yet um but you're getting into some more serious modifications and more serious wheeling there are stages in which you can upgrade your factory roll bar, your factory roll cage in. They, they offer crossbars and lateral support bars and other things that you can tie in the roll cage to other parts of the vehicle and tie in other parts of the roll cage to itself to make it much more stronger. And, uh, and this also gives you ability to uh, mount other storage uh, options, give you another place to mount a fire extinguisher um, or you know, a shovel or a high lift jack, you know, something like that. Uh, you know, a new crossbar across that roll cage. Now suddenly you have a lot more storage options as well. Good place to put your CV too. Right, there yeah. you go. Boy, anything that you have to add? Maybe you have a question for Tech Talk. We'll just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and send us a message. Who knows? You might have your question answered here on the show. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. Who wants free Wrangler parts? Ooh, I ooh, do. Pick me. Pick me. <laughs> Our friends at Extreme Terrain seem to always be giving something away, whether it's gift cards, parts, gosh, even vehicles. But this month, as Jeep Talk Show sponsor, they are giving away $3,000 in upgrades for your 1987 and newer Jeep Wrangler. 
So whether your Wrangler is bone stock or completely built, the team at Extreme Terrain knows every Jeep Wrangler owner could use another $3,000 in mods. From (laughs) bumpers to lighting, light kits to wheels and tires, Extreme Terrain has the goods you need to get your Wrangler ready for the new year. And remember, their fast and free shipping is available from Extreme Terrain for nearly everything they sell with guaranteed delivery by 1224. The more you enter, the more chances you have at winning. So be sure and visit extremeterrain.com slash win to enter daily or simply click the link in today's Jeep Talk show notes for the official rules and details. From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. Howdy ho, boys and girls. You know, it's almost Christmas, and we were uh, lucky enough to uh, get a a past uh, interviewee, a past company, a past individual that we had uh, a good interview with back in uh, mid-August, episode 345 for you guys uh, uh, keeping track and want to go back and uh, listen to the, the, the prior interview. It's uh, Gabe. Uh, he is the owner of Aero X Industries, maker of the Aero Lids light bar uh, silencer. He uh, <laughs> he was a victim of the dreaded light bar whistle, uh, so he invented the Aero Lids to eliminate that horrible whistling noise. His company uh, recently won three global media awards at their first SEMA wow. show. Yeah. Uh, Gabe is an avid off-roader that has uh, a love for Jeeps and the community. He gives to many charities throughout the year. Uh, check them out at www.aerolidz.com. For more information on all of their products, Gabe, thanks a lot for being with us. Now, it, something has ha- must have happened since August of uh, this uh, this year. Yeah, lots of things, lots of things. Um, <laughs> thinking back, thinking back. Oh my God! Since since August, oh man. <laughs> yeah, well, SEMA ha- happens on Halloween, so Fremont Street was the kickoff. <laughs> oh, I bet you had a, a hell of a time getting ready for uh, for SEMA. What's that? I bet you had a hell of a time getting ready for SEMA. Yeah, it it, it was. You know, coming from St. Louis all the way to Las Vegas, it's there's a lot of logistics that goes, you know, goes into it and you got to get everything lined up perfectly and hope it all arrives in one piece so you can meet it there and put it together. Oh my God, you didn't drive out the trailer? You didn't go to the U-Haul, pick up a big no. U-Haul and just trailer it out there? <laughs> no, no, couldn't. Couldn't swing that. <laughs> smart, smart man. So uh, let's yep. let's remind all listeners because uh, we have a bunch of new listeners. All the every time we do a show, uh, w- what exactly is Aero Lids and what is Aero X? Well, Aero X Industries, for one, is the uh, mothership company. Um, uh, it basically we're taking lighting and making it better. We don't make lights. Um, We've got uh, this Aerolids light bar cover that goes on the uh, straight dual row light bars and makes them more aerodynamic so you can travel at high speeds and not have the wind drag that everybody seems to know about or may not know about yet like I was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, this literally so, came from this the, the design, the idea came literally from because you got tired of hearing that noise. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But then uh, the funny thing about it, uh, a little later, I guess uh, oh, about six months later, a friend of mine come down, t- uh, a neighbor actually come down, and he's like, man, he goes, what if we put like a bumper sticker on it or something? And I'm like, what? So I took his bumper sticker and I slid it inside, and that's how the inserts were uh, born. So basically so cool. I set Hopkins out uh, to... <laughs> That's a great idea. Figure out the, the best way. materials to, to to slide inserts inside these covers. So when you say inserts, uh, you mean there's uh, uh, something that you can put in front of the light, and then uh, you can shine the light through it. Uh, it I mean, you don't have to, yeah. but but you can to light it up. Yeah, there, there's several. There's actually three things you can do. Uh, first and foremost, we have a transparent uh, insert. It's a plastic 
uh, or a polycarbonate film, so to speak, that w- uh, slides inside and it wedges and it paints the inside face of the cover. So it looks like the whole cover is that color. And when you turn your lights on, you can blow out green, red, blue, black light, whatever. And then uh, for the street legal approach, <laughs> we have a black, yeah. <laughs> a black insert. And you can slide that in there, and that'll appease all the police uh, out there that are cracking down on people running their light bars during the day, mm-hmm. blinding people in night. So, and then the third one is a translucent uh, insert, plastic insert, and it's uh, UV printed to where when you turn your lights on day or night, it backlights an image, be a Jeep club, design name, flags, you name it. It's printed on there. It's a great marketing approach for your company. Oh, I bet. So, can you get custom? Like I could call uh, call you up and say, "Can I get Jeep Mama?" No, and we're you, not a you... custom shop. Uh, uh-huh. What we do, we have we try to get the most common and most popular designs first. But right. we do have an option. Uh, we have a blank white one mm-hmm. that is translucent. And what you can do is a- anybody that has a Cricut or, you know, that's a vi- vinyl cutter. Right. Uh, or you can go to a local vinyl shop. Everybody knows a decal guy. Yeah. Well, right. Exactly. Most Jeepers put do. put their own decals on the white insert, and then they can slide that inside of the light bar, and it will illuminate that vinyl. Oh, or, even better yet, say you put black letters on that white insert, you can couple it with one of our transparent colored inserts, which mm-hmm. is the, we basically have the rainbow. Um, and say you had the black letters of your favorite Jeep club or your Jeep name or whatever. Jeep podcast. You, yeah, and you put that <laughs> on the insert and you put the red uh, transparent insert on top of that, okay? Then you slide them in together, flip the light on. Now the black letters hold the light back and allow the light to uh, come through the white insert and it glows the red. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Like a lit up red sign with black right. letters. Yeah, there's really no, that would be no really end cool. uh, to be able to do it. I, yeah, I, I think it I, is. And I, I mean, I, we got so many people just creating their own and coming up with cool ideas. Tammy, I think uh, if you did red on one side, blue on the other, and had a little black insert in the middle that said Popo, it would be really good. You could just flick yeah, it on uh-huh. and off. <laughs> I'd be getting tickets yeah, left I, and right. Absolutely. Or the upside down letters flip the over. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Right. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, now, surely you've heard from people, maybe not, but I'm going to ask anyway, uh, did, did, what did they get away with with the police? Can can some people, have you heard anything about them running the inserts and running this thing at night and, and not being bothered by the police? Well, let's start with this. I was down at Crystal Beach, Texas for the Go Topless uh, Jeep event down there. And I I seen so many people pulled over because of their light bars on. Oh, wow. Literally on the beach. And there's there's 20,000 people down there on this, this beach going up and down while the cops are trying to pull over anybody they can. Well, we rolled down with seven Jeeps with our covers on. We had American flags. We had <laughs> Texas flag. And the cops waved to us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so wow. And your lights anything. were on? With It's a safety concern. If, if you're blinding people, they're going to give you a ticket. Yeah. It's right. common sense. So, so you guys had your lights on, insert. but you had the, the inserts in, so it wasn't as bright. Correct. Blocks okay. all that light down. So we're not saying the police won't pull you over, <laughs> <Correct>. <laughs> but you have a better chance well, of it I not happening. I say, I will go out on a limb. They will not pull you over if your light bar is covered with an arrow lids and it has a black insert in it. That's very true. Because it blocks 100% of the light. Now, do you? I will go out on a limb and say that. Yeah, do you? <laughs> that makes sense. Do you? Uh, do you see a situation with a heat buildup whenever you have these inserts in, especially with the black one? Oh no, not at 
all. Excellent. That's uh, it's great. open on the sides and in the back, and that's where all the heat fins are. Yeah, I mean, I know that the LEDs are, are traditionally not a, a heat generator, uh, but when you start getting up high in the wattage and a bunch of them together, they, they do warm up. And, of course, like you just said, it has the uh, heat sinks on the back, which I believe is really the main cause of the whistling. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, you get the whistling from the heat sinks and then the flat face, you get the howl and the death tone in your ear. And the biggest, biggest uh, thing that I had no idea that I was even fixing um, is the soft top flap, the drumming from that stock soft top you get from Jeep. Um, I haven't had any problems with the uh, best top tops, but... Uh, Something with that stock top, the rag top, it's just not as stiff, I guess, or, um, you know, it's not a lot of sport there. You know, Tammy, this is a, a great uh, thing for you because now uh, it just tells you that if you are going to go get a light bar for your Jeep, you don't want all that, that buffeting noise at the top jumping up and down because of the airflow being going over the uh, right. uh, the light right. bar. You need to get a light bar and an aero lids. And the you know, white translucent, so I can put my own <laughs> well, sticker in. So well, let me go on, find some on, more guys. Legos. To we sell. need to put the Jeep Show on a light bar cover. That's I mean, what I'm saying. Hello, <laughs> 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 with both of your faces on each end. Oh, oh my yeah, goodness. that would be a sight, right? I, you know that well, I got the I, cartoon character. I have these. Yeah. I have this vision in my That'd head. You've, you've seen those memes where they show uh, how the uh, the tattoo of the person doesn't really translate between the picture and the what they have on the person's arm i get to right. see the right. same type of thing on the light bar <laughs> <laughs> what is that on there I oh can't that's make horrible it out. those people dead is yeah. that why it's on there <laughs> we got some cool things coming out guys and we got some christmas uh inserts that are on the market right now we had uh one design with the christmas bulbs you know christmas lights mm-hmm. they sold out in oh uh, wow maybe a week and a half oh it's it's a great um, idea i mean that's then, that's why i yeah, wanted to get you back on ugly, was a, ugly uh, christmas sweater design we still <laughs> got a couple of those left oh that's funny yeah i mean this yeah. is one of the reasons why i reached out to you because i saw that uh, merry christmas uh, light bar on uh, your uh, facebook page and i thought well that's a brilliant idea yeah. everybody wants a christmas yeah. thing they put a a wreath on their Jeep and uh, they're stringing lights oh. and stuff. You need to lo- use the light bar. My God, you got this big light bar and you don't use it for anything ever. So <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> yep. Day or night, you know, daylight uh, running lights is what we call them. Now they can see you coming. I think it'd be so, cool, uh, especially for the Uber, to get one in yellow that said taxi. So what are the inserts on that, made don't out of? Uh, <laughs> a million dollar idea. We come up with million dollar ideas here, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got some really cool stuff. I got a really good artist um, in my pocket. So he uh, he's he's a three D artist, and we're gonna do some pretty three pretty cool three dimensional stuff here pretty soon. So it'll look like something's flying at you when you turn it on. Let's just say it huh. that way. Oh, that's neat. That'll yeah. be cool. Do you have to wear three D glasses though to see it? In 3D? <laughs> no, it's just it's all optics on the light. So it all depends on where you put the light and you, the accents. Uh, it just gives you that appearance that it's three-dimensional definition. So, so, Gabe, I'm curious. What's your background? You can't be just somebody that came up with this idea, like, damn, that thing's making noise. Let me try to fix that. Let me uh, Now let me build a company. You must have had some sort of uh, company background or in, uh, inventor background or something uh, prior to this. Well, I, I went to school for an art degree. <laughs> I quit and... Uh, I uh, took over the family business as an electrical contractor, electrician. Uh, so I've been working with lights and LED lighting all my life. So kind of, or not all my life, but lighting in general. Right. And, you know, from there I ran, you know, a business through the crappiest times anybody can run a business. So, yeah, I got... Well, that's a great teacher. I learned a lot. School of Hard Knocks and... Uh, you know, um, you just, just like anybody else does, they find something they're passionate about and you got to get out there and make it happen. Oh yeah. Don't, absolutely. don't pass you by. Somebody else will, will make it happen if you don't. 
Um, now, right. let, now we we've talked about the inserts and stuff. Let's go back to the the main thing, your your bread and butter here, the thing you really invented, which is really the cover that goes around the light. Because there may be some people out there that are not familiar with the uh, Aero X Industries or the Aero Lids. Uh, can you give right. us a give them an idea of what this uh, this thing is that stops the whistling? Yeah, so it's 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 a polycarbonate plastic, clear or smoked. Uh, uh, it's like it, it's shaped like an airplane wing. That's the best way I can describe it over the radio here. <laughs> um, it it basically opens up like a clamshell. If you can imagine putting something inside of a clam that was a little bit uh, bigger than the clam could completely shut, you know, close. It wedges itself in there, and it it's got these ribs inside that bite down and hold the top and bottom of light bar the whole entire length so it gives it a, a curved uh face to cut through the wind and then it wraps around the back to cover up the fins so the air coming up your windshield underneath doesn't affect the, the whistling of those fins um so basically you can stretch it stretch it open from one side of your vehicle one person application stretch it open you put it up there with your right or left hand and uh, you start at one end and you use your other arm to kind of work itself on and it'll literally pull itself on and slam on. It won't break. Uh, you can stretch it open to as strong as you can. I, I mean, I, 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 I can't open it all the way. It's just that strong. Mm-hmm. So... So it's uh, it's clear plastic. It's uh, it's kind of yeah. like a, a C thing, or or if you uh, not maybe not C, but basically it's open it's in the back. Hand, you know. Yeah, it's exactly. Hand like a little, you know, a little puppet. Right, and it just uh, snaps onto the uh, uh, the front of the uh, the light bar. Actually, kind of goes around the top and the bottom, and uh, re, uh, re, uh, what, I guess redirects. I was going to say retrains, but redirects that airflow. And uh, sure. what what is it now, Gabe? You guys are getting what uh, an extra ten mile per gallon out of uh, Jeeps by this uh, aerodynamics? Is is that the selling point? <laughs> but no, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. But I I will tell you this: we've had reports from customers, lots of customers. You can go on our Facebook, and you can go on uh, Amazon, you can go on um, our website. We have reviews of people saying. And telling us that they got that one or two miles per gallon that they lost oh. when they put the damn light bar up there. Well, so, it makes sense because it's more aerodynamic. It is. It's wind drag, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, you can't put something flat in the middle of a, an angled windshield. That's where all your force is coming through. So, uh, you know, it's the biggest part about it. Is it's it's really easy to put on and. Nobody likes um, reaching up there and grabbing these little plastic covers that they sell on the market right now and their little 10-inch sections, and you can't reach the middle two or three right. on these Jeeps. They're too high, and then, then you can't get them off once you get them on because they're, like, they're hard to pinch, the little tabs. And then what I find most of all is the sun eats them up. You put those covers on there. I give it a summer. You try to get one off, every one of those tabs are going to break off. Oh, that's interesting. The UV, yeah. Yep. And then everybody talks about the rubber silencers. Shove them in the back. Well, give it one summer. I guarantee you, you're going to be pulling those things out, and they're going to be falling apart in your hand. And you got to be careful because you do need some airflow over those fins to to keep the LED uh, cool. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be putting caulk and silicone light goes bad you're you're stuck with it. you ain't getting a new one right it just looks good it's uh, for the warranty yeah exactly so um you know unfortunately you know like you've been saying a lot of people don't even use their light bars well we're giving you a reason to use them now right it gives you a chance to to use that thing that you paid for and maybe right. uh, uh, and bought that bracket yeah. and everything to put on there and now you can do some for it with it, and uh, the cops yep. probably won't bother you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So That's what do you think, Tammy? You... Police department <laughs> yeah. fundraiser so what... up there. <laughs> so what do you think, Tammy? You need one of those Merry Christmas ones, don't you? Yeah, actually, I want one that says Jeep Mama. 
So, well, you know somebody yeah. that does stickers, right? Oh yeah. Wow, I have lots yeah, of decals on my Jeep. I need to get a light bar first, Tony. <laughs> well, it's Christmas time. Or you know, you're always shopping, doing interviews, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I shopping know. Well, for a light I was bar? shopping too, but I'm like, I really need to buy a light bar first. I didn't even think about the. Uh, I I remember Gabe talking about this on the the last time we interviewed him about the the flopping of the t- the top of the uh, soft tops on the Jeep. Right. I, 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 I that would drive me nuts. That that drumming right. noise would just drive me nuts. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, right. something that you guys don't know that. I'm just going to kind of leak out there right now. Please. Is I get about five to ten messages on several different platforms uh, daily. And at people asking me about the curved light bar covers. Oh, yeah. When are they coming out? Um, you know, there's a lot of cheap guys out there that have the curved bars. And I... I I'm going to tell you that we will have them hell or high water by summer of next year. Awesome. Oh, that's, that's, I'm surprised you guys can even make those because I would think that would yeah. be very difficult to make. We've got a lot of, we got a team of engineers uh, working on it currently. Uh, we've got our prototype going to be shipped out next week. Um, so we're going to get it tested and... See what happens. So, man, that's great. That's great news for all those, all those curved yep. light bar uh, folks out there because they, I'm, I'm sure they have the similar issues that the uh, the one, other ones don't. Oh, and I didn't mention either. Uh, it, it's great protection for that expensive light bar because now you don't oh, yeah. have to worry about the uh, the glass or or whatever it cracking by getting hit uh, from uh, debris. So, uh, it, it, it's, it's good protection for your light bar. Um, so, yeah, this 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 new. Uh, curved version it's going to be a slightly different profile um but it it's also going to allow us to make a different profile for all the little shorter bars that everybody's been asking us about too um you know the bumper bars the hood bars um even the utvs out there i know it's a lot of the jeepers pulls oh, utvs yeah. to the off-road parks and you know they've got the bars on there too so Big things coming. That's all I'm saying. Oh, and I, I remember asking this uh, the last time we spoke. What what sizes do you, you only have like one size and you cut it down uh, yep. based on whatever uh, size you have. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's it, the longest light bar on the market that we've found that's straight is a 51 and a half inches long. From there, we have it made to where you can trim it down to as short as a 48 inch light with that one purchase then we have the 32 inch bar and then we have the now the 22 inch bar oh okay so if, uh, a lot of the guys run the 22s on the hood for the jeeps so uh, now you can match up your smoked uh light bar up on the windshield to your hood light bar and how do you go about cutting these things uh so it's super simple it's just like cutting wood use a miter saw a powered miter saw is what i recommend because you can make make a nice straight clean cut take you about three seconds to do Uh, i think the longest part is just getting it measured and putting it down there on the on the saw (laughs) yeah measuring twice and cutting once yeah (laughs) And then from there, I mean, it's 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 a nice clean cut. I use a standard, believe it or not, I have like a twenty year old blade on my saw that I cut with, <laughs> and it works perfectly. So yeah, I'm changing anytime soon. Well, there you go, uh, but, uh, folks. It can't be easier than that. I mean, you know, you 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 make the police happy. You uh, get to use that light bar, and you uh, uh, get to protect the thing after a while, and don't have to listen to it whistling a little tune. That's right. Yeah, I think I think I made the joke on the email that you guys were going to come up with one that would do Yankee Doodle Danny uh, Dan, uh, Dandy on uh, on Fourth of July, and uh, you could actually use that yeah. whistling for music like they do on the roads. So. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, one yeah, thing, but, you know, to all your uh, fans, you know, we, we we're going to have something for every holiday. Just, oh, you know, great! There's going to be collections of stuff that 
that we're going to want to have, special edition stuff. We got big companies signing on with us that want their brand put in. Uh, we got some big sponsors for our company coming up with our new build of the Aero X Jeep and a few of the other Jeeps in our fleet. So, Oh, you just got to be pinching yourself every day. Like, I'm so glad <laughs> this thing, I'm so glad this light bar pissed me off enough that I had to go <laughs> fix it. <laughs> Hey, if my wife was on the phone right now, she'd be saying it's all because of her. Oh, of course. But it right. is. And that's what you always have to say, Gabe. Yes, yeah. dear. Yes, we want it for Christmas. I said, check my Amazon shopping cart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So she got me a light bar. So uh, well, one thing we didn't do the last time you were on, uh, we, uh, we didn't have a giveaway. But this time we do have a giveaway. Tell the folks what you're going to be giving them. Yeah, so what we're going to offer up is a clear light bar cover with Jeep Life insert. Ooh. Yeah. It's got, some, uh, it's got some tire treads on it, crisscrossing on each end. And when you light it up, it really looks, really looks good. It really does. It's one of my favorites. So this is going to be one, folks, and only one, uh, 50, only one. To, well, 50 or 52-inch clear uh, for a 50, 52-inch clear uh, aero lids cover, uh, like uh, Gabe just said, with the Jeep Life insert. And uh, Gabe, um, pick a pick a number between 1 and 10. This is going to be what uh, uh, caller uh, wins this. Hmm. My favorite number would be number 6. Number 6. All right, so the sixth caller into our voicemail, just go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to get that voicemail number. And uh, let's make them say something, Gabe. They're going to have a little uh, a little promo thing for you or something. What, what can we have them say? Let's say uh, aerolids don't make lights. They make them better. Oh, I think I heard you mention that earlier, and that's kind of like the the tagline for, uh, for AeroX. That's right. So aero lids don't make lights; they make them better. So that you guys are going to be called, so somebody has to be the six caller, right? And aero lids don't make uh, lights; they make them better. And uh, you're going to win a uh, fifty slash fifty two inch clear aero lids cover with a Jeep Life insert. And as you heard Gabe said, it has uh, treads and things on it. So uh, this is going to be great. And whoever wins, you need to take a damn picture and share it with us so we can uh, share it with our listeners. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm sure Gabe would like to see it, too. Follow us on Instagram and post your pictures there so we can see them. And hashtag us, tag us. Um, any of the listeners that have an Aero Lids now, oh, yeah. tag us. Absolutely. We, we would like to repost everything. So you, you mentioned social media. You, the, I'm sure guys can find you on Facebook. Uh, you said Instagram. Where else? Uh, those are the two channels. Mostly. So, it, is it, uh, is YouTube, it, we have some videos and uh, informational videos. Uh, but Instagram and Facebook's where we're at. And that's at uh, Arrow X or Arrow Lids or? Yeah, it, it's Arrow X Industries. So just doing a search uh, you know, for Arrow X Industries on uh, one of your favorite uh, uh, social medias, Facebook or Instagram, and you can find these folks. And, you know, if you're curious about the product, you can always go over to AeroLids.com. That's L-I-D-Z.com yep. and uh, have a look directly. And, you yeah, know, there's links on there, too. They can follow through. Yep. And, and, you know, everybody has a spouse that's hard to buy for. Well, here's something they probably, uh, if they haven't already bought it, this is a perfect thing to get them for Christmas. And, uh, Gabe, you guys aren't sold out, right? I mean, you still got these things oh, for no. Christmas? Oh, yeah. You got you got fast yep. shipping? Because we're getting close. Yep, we've got fast shipping. you got uh, two methods. It can be priority shipping in two, two to three days is what's averaging. And uh, you can get Express. Have it there guaranteed in a day or two. Excellent. There you go. It's a great Christmas gift. Uh, Affordable shipping too. It's USPS, um, so it's not it's not terribly expensive at all. And this isn't like getting the Atlas. The UPS guy is not going to be pissed off at you when you order it because it's nice and light. <laughs> no. Right. Exactly. UPS. Yes, believe it or not, UPS likes to charge a little service fee because of it because of it being more than forty eight inches long. Oh, oh yeah. Geez. So, yeah, that service fee is a killer on all of us. 
Yeah, I can imagine. And it's so light. This, this is making sense. It is. So, it is. so Gabe, thank you so much for being with us tonight. We really appreciate it. And uh, lots of luck to you. But it sounds like you're almost out of it. You, you've used it all up. It's, it's doing, you're doing such a great <laughs> so, job with this. We're having fun. That's, I mean, you can see that on my webpage. Um, that's our motto. I I'm not going to do this if I'm not having fun. Oh, absolutely. Well, Gabe, thanks a lot for being with us. And, of course, uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family. All right. You too, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Gabe. Well, look at Gabe Warner coming back to the Jeep Talk Show to talk about Aero X Industries once again. This time around, giving away one of their aerodynamic light bar silencers. That's right. And, of course, you guys have to be that sixth caller, as stated, and uh, you can win the uh, 50 or 52 inch clear aero lids cover with a Jeep Life insert. Now, in order to win that, you have to make sure you say the phrase that pays. Just calling in and saying your name, that's not going to cut it. You need to say, aero lids don't make lights, they make them better. So if you say that and you are the sixth caller, well, we're going to head, going to head and give you, I'll we'll hook you up with one of these awesome aerodynamic light bar silencers. And I'll just make this clear. Uh, you need to be able to say that, that phrase. If you don't say the phrase exactly right, you get one chance. Don't call back because we're not going to count that as a call. No, that's right. So take your time. Tony's a Tony's a stickler, folks. (laughs) Well, we want to be fair. We want to be fair about this. So, uh, you got to say it right. If you call back, it doesn't matter or you forget to call. (laughs) You, You didn't listen long enough to hear the phrase. That's sorry. That's your call. So one call. Uh, you need to be uh, 18 years or older, and you need to be in the U.S. to win this. So we're going to get the the sixth caller, and you we're only going to count that caller if you do it right. Uh, don't be like last week. Don't assume somebody else won it and then call in uh, the following week and then win. I guess it doesn't matter if you win, but still, call in. I'm sure you'd rather have this thing uh, sooner than later. Once again, that phrase that pays, arrow lids don't make lights, they make them better. And if you have an idea for a guest or if you work in the off-road industry, maybe you know somebody who does, maybe you would like to be a guest on the Jeep Talk Show. Well, we want to hear from you. We need to hear from you. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact right now and share your idea for our next great guest. It very well could be you. Hey, coming up next week, we'll be talking with the folks from the one, the only, CB World, as in Citizens Band. Yeah, we're going to be talking about radios. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, everybody knows about some craps a lot. But uh, we have a cat, and he's feeling a little jealous that he's not getting any attention. So I'd like to introduce everybody to uh, our cat, Major Fluffy Nose and Toes. Now, Mr. <laughs> Fluffy Nose and Toes enjoys long naps and short walks. Oh, jeez. And leaving uh, a disemboweled cats. rodents where we least expect it. Uh, he's got a very important job at the Nikki G compound. He patrols the perimeter for uh, paranormal activity. <laughs> and uh, since Major Fluffy Nose and Toes has been on a job, there have been no vampire attacks, no werewolf sightings, no zombie attacks, and alien probing has been down 30%. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sir Crap's a lot job is to uh, empty the litter box. Oh. All right, boys and girls, I'll chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. No. Oh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, remind me, Nikki G, to never have your dog kiss me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know where that nose has been? Or any dog. That's right. Okay, class, it's time for a review. Let's check it out. Check it out! It's time for Jeep Mama's product review. Now, what is it, and why do I want it? So last week, I decided I'm going to do things I want for Christmas instead of a product review. Top and five that, things I want for Christmas. Yes, <laughs> top five. Um, I don't think there's going to be five because Christmas is, gosh. Number one is a gong couple weeks away um moving along so <laughs> moving along. this is something that i don't think now if, correct me if i'm wrong somebody out You're there because if, 
You can. <laughs> I know I'm always wrong because if you can find this for the Jeep Wrangler, a, a 2015 Jeep Wrangler, I would be so happy. But the only one like it that I can find are for 87 to 06, the YJs and the TJs. But I really, really want this for my JKU. And it's a toughy under seat, full length locking drawer. Um, I saw somebody with this in their Jeep and it's like a little toolbox where you put all your tools, your ratchet, your wrenches and all that. And it fits in there perfectly. And I'm like, that would be so cool to have in my Jeep. And it's the Tuffy Security Under Seat Full Length Locking Drawer. And it's fabricated out of 16 gauge steel with black powder coat for corrosion resistance. And it's a tough secure storage unit, full length. And it fits right underneath the rear seat, extending all the way to the rear tailgate for the 87 to 95 YJs and the 1997 to 2006 Jeep Wrangler TJ. And it's secure for lots of small items. You can put flashlights, tools. Um, it's bolt-on for the TJs, and drilling is required for the YJs, and um, there's a mounting kit that's necessary. It's an anti-twist button lock with double-bitted 10 tumbler, security key and weather seals, anti-pry locking system with quarter-inch steel latch, it can be closed without locking, and it bolts to the floor with the rear seat on top. And the, like I said, the mounting kit is required. And the seat's still going to be able to fold and tumble. And the, the drawer will open to the rear only. Anyway, I would love to have one of these for my Jeep. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe the one for the YJ and the TJ, if I could somehow get it to fit in my JKU. I don't know. Anyway, I would love to have this product. You know, I had, I had to go back and reread this thing because you, you really caught my attention when you said it goes all the way back to the tailgate. I thought you were mm -hmm. talking about something that was going under the front seat. I, I, immediately, I was thinking of, uh, you know, modern day uh, news articles, and I was thinking this would be an excellent way to sneak somebody past the border wall. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, well, and it, I, somebody would have to be super skinny because it's, it's, it only stands, um, I don't know. It's it's like it's like a tool drawer almost. Yeah. No, this you know, is that's, not very, that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, especially opening to the rear like that. I would yeah. imagine it's the shape of the uh, of the TJ that they're that they're going right. with, and that's why it's, it's not uh, not meant for the JK. But I'm really surprised Tuffy doesn't have someone like that. I know. Maybe maybe they're listening and they can build me one. The but anyway, model. yes. It, it's actually a really cool thing to have because the person who I saw had it was a, a female jeeper and she goes off roading and that's where she keeps all her tools. And it's so easy. You're like, God, I just oh, yeah. broke my steering stabilizer. Let me just go open my drawer and it's right there. You don't have to go digging through your tool bag. You don't have to go in the back of your Jeep and dig through your ammo can. You just open yep. the drawer and it's, there's your tools. Well, when so. you when you go and look for that 10 millimeter socket, Tammy, you may have to get back in the Jeep and accelerate so it rolls to the back. Right, exactly. So you can get to it. <laughs> Now, I will say that, that Tuffy Products makes storage solutions for the JK, and they, they make some under-seat storage solutions, but they're for the front seats. Right. But they do right. go all the way from the front of the front seat to the back of the front seat. It's a pretty decent amount of storage, and they've got one for both the passenger and the driver's side. Uh, they even have a, um, a concealed carry passenger side version uh, if you wanted to put your uh, concealed carry, your daily carry or whatever. Uh, in there and keep it safe. It's not just a, uh, you know, a drawer. It actually is a security drawer, meaning uh, it's got a, you know, pry guard locking system, you know, the, the 10 tumbler double bitted lock that all the Tuffy products have and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So uh, very secure options there. But, you know, Tammy, if you're looking for some storage solutions, um, you know, granted, they, they don't have that one, uh, at least that I could find for underneath the JK rear seat, uh, but they do have these underneath the front seat. So, you know, places right. to store uh, some some basic tools or uh, maybe recovery gear, you know, stuff like that uh, might be an option for you. Yeah, those things are nice. That's what I thought you were talking yeah. about when you first started talking about because I'm a, aware no, of the I front like, seat ones. Yeah, no, I like the big, I know the other ones, I like all of them, but I really, really want yeah. um, no, one, that, that, that one that I can put in my, and it doesn't have to go under the seat because it could just go in the back because I kind of have like a trunk right. and then I could stack other stuff on top of it, so... Anyway. Well, they do make that. They do make that. Uh, 
I'm going to call it a trunk lid, a JK trunk lid. You know, it's basically a, a locking steel cover right. for that, 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 you know, cargo area in the back of your Jeep. And, and, and it kind of makes you a, a trunk, if you were, right. if you will, you know, in the back there. Now, there are some other options. I know that, that Quadratech and, and some other companies make some, you know, more universal type of slide out drawer uh, type of things that you can put in the back of vehicles, uh, but they're not, they're not vehicle specific. And, uh, well, they may leave a little something to be desired off road. Right, right. Well, do you have an idea for a product review? Just go and visit our contact page at the JeepTalkShow.com and let us know what you'd like to hear about on our next product review. And coming up in a few minutes, we're going to hear about a little something that's happening in your hometown around the nation in Wheeling Ware. You guys are never going to believe what I am holding in my hand right now. Put that thing away. Are you crazy? (laughs) Go behind the tree like normal people. I am holding a a, uh, a check, actually. Uh, No, this is not a check from the Jeep Talk Show. This is actually from... Did Tony pay you and not me? (laughs) This is uh, this is actually a, a check from uh, the uh, the uh, Oregon D- Department of Justice uh, from the Multnomah County. Uh, it's to, to be specific in regards to a case number uh, versus uh, the state of Oregon versus uh, one person who I will uh, leave unnamed. I believe this is the, the first of many installments of restitution that is coming my way for when my Honda first got stolen many many years ago. Wow. I, it's weird. I, 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 I wow. you, know, you see this, this envelope and it's got that, you know, the official state looking, you know, envelope to it. It's got, you know, the state seal up through the, the little window that you can see through. And I'm like, oh, crap. Am I being served? You know, it's like, right. I mean, this is, this cannot duty. be good news. Department of Justice. Right. What the hell did I do now? You know, it's like, did I run a light? Did I get speeding? Oh, great. This is a traffic ticket. You know, what is this? But then I, I start looking. I was like, wait, wait a minute. No, that. That looks like a check almost. I open up the envelope and and sure enough, referencing a case number, you know, state of Oregon versus yada, 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 um, all this stuff. Sure enough, case number matches um, case number that I have on record for when my my car was first stolen uh, many years ago. Uh, and was involved in a high-speed chase uh, with police, and uh, where the uh, the occupant uh, had ditched the vehicle while it was still in motion and uh, outran the cops on foot. And uh, involved, uh, it took them uh, on a, a twelve-hour manhunt out in Boring, oh, Oregon. Wow. So that was that was good times wow. there. Well, see, I blame the trees for that twelve-hour manhunt. Um, <clears throat> it was tree. He was actually found in a tree by a canine <laughs> unit. So yeah, there so, you go. So Josh, I got a, a tip for you because <clears throat> I'm sure the amount on that check is massive, and you, <laughs> and not, you can that's, that's and funny. you can <laughs> and you can endorse that s- straight to McDonald's when you're buying from the dollar menu. <laughs> oh God! So, so um, at the time, uh, and this was at least three or four years ago. Oh, at, uh, least. at the time when, uh, yeah, at least uh, the the person uh, was about twenty five years old, um, had never had a job, had spent his entire adult life in and out of jail. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got this, you know, four or five thousand dollar judgment against him in, in my favor. Uh, I'm never going to see that, no. you know? And so here we are like five years later and I get this check from, you know, the department of treasury or whatever for, you know, $75. And I'm like, what the, you know, I started looking, doing some research. Oh yeah. Okay. I know that name. <laughs> I mean, 75 bucks. That's not bad. That, that'll that help you uh, in that thousand dollars you spend for fireworks every year. Well, and the guy probably gets his first paycheck as an adult. And he's looking at, and, and there's, you know, garnishment, you know, <laughs> the big right. bold letters, you know, something. And the guy's getting like 25% of his paycheck. And, and it's, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, but I, I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be any more of these. He probably saw that he's and, not getting his full paycheck. And so he's like, well, screw this whole working thing. I'm going back to crime. And, and, and right at Christmas, Josh, this, this oh, is yeah. not a feel good story. Uh, you taking money out of somebody that's trying oh, to make an right. honest way. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go that route. <laughs> I mean, you got your car back. This, it's not. It. <laughs> it's not like the Honda wasn't stolen many times. I it mean, was. It, how it's dare stolen you? Many times afterwards <laughs> and uh, after this, but this he was the only one that was caught. So <laughs> you should you should find this young lad and endorse the check to him and oh, say sure. and say Merry Christmas. 
And have oh, you seen, no, that, that, have that you seen my new Honda? Promptly on my lunch break today. <laughs> <laughs> as quickly as you could. Indeed. I don't want to give you any, any options for, uh, you know, well, maybe we will, we'll collect that for a little while before we give it to him. But no. <laughs> No, hey, uh, shifting gears here, I got to give a shout out to Benjamin Conway, uh, Benjamin C., who has confirmed that I am not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was pinned at the time. I don't know if it's yeah, a legitimate. Yeah. It, was, uh, it, was, it was it was under duress. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did he do this? You might be asking. Well, he witnessed for himself a fellow Jeeper in a lifted JKU, a female driver who was sporting a knitted spare tire cover. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I had talked about this like a year ago or, or more Lord. about how I had witnessed this. I sh- I sh- seriously, a, a crocheted spare tire cover. <laughs> I kid you not. And uh, and I was like, there's no way I just saw this. I, I tried to take a couple pictures of it. It didn't turn out very well. I was like, I, I know what I saw. I saw somebody who had crocheted themselves a spare tire cover. I know what I say. That's what, and, but nobody believed me. <laughs> Nobody's ever seen another one of these things again, except for my friend now, Benjamin Conway, who is my new hero. And he has confirmed that these things do exist. Thank you, Benjamin, for uh, writing into the Jeep Talk Show and sharing your experiences. Well, really you know, appreciate. you know the meme. It, it shows There's a meme. Yeah, it shows that, and it says, "When Grandma knits you a tire cover, you put oh, it on the tire." That right. was probably that one. Oh <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, man, if you Scotch guard it, it, it should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I'm curious to see what his looked like. Uh, you know, mine was it was a pretty much rainbow, uh, but uh, you know, Shocking. Oregon, go Shocking. figure. Shocking, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I want to give a shout out to Dan Cole at the Four by Four Podcast. Yeah. Um, How much is he paying you? No, well, I don't know. He actually <laughs> asked for my address, and I'm like, "What did you find my D ring?" Um, no, he's been. If Problem. You're on Instagram, folks, or Facebook. Uh, you guys should go follow him. He's been posting some really cool stuff. But I just wanted to thank him for because he has been posting this stuff. And he's like, follow these guys for more off-roading podcast goodness. And he puts at Jeep Mama. So he's helping to get me followers on Instagram. So I just wanted to thank him. Just do a little shout out. So, And folks, if you are on Instagram, you should go follow me and go follow the 4x4 podcast. So... Um, anyway, pretty much that's it. Just been doing a lot of um, shopping and working and working on my um, blog posts from um, when I was in New Orleans. I'm doing a series of four of them, and I have so far four? posted. Yes, Not I did five. my time. <laughs> oh five. shoot! <laughs> oh now you have a thing, oh, Tammy. Now I'm you have, have a have thing. To- gotta, Why do I have to remind more, you? Tammy. You, you have this gimmick, more. you know, it's five yeah. times. I know. <laughs> well, well, one of them is the five drinks, my five favorite drinks while I was in New Orleans. There you go. Yeah. You know what? And I didn't even include the fireball drink. <laughs> the, well, it was tied for the top three. But we <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which well, drink? I actually, I called it cocktails, I think. Which, I did. which drink um, excites you the most or gives you the most bruises? Yeah. Just yeah. Sure. <laughs> Those bruises. Right. <laughs> Full contact uh, shots. Ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, just been busy doing that stuff in my my Tammy, videos. Do you have any uh, wheeling trips planned? I, I know that you you've been wheeling yeah, out a little uh, bit more than uh, than I have lately. I know you've got uh, some stuff on I the radar. Do you have anything coming up December the rest of December or January? Um, I'd like to get back to Rush Creek in January. I've been so crazy busy. I haven't I haven't been wheeling since women we, Women's Wheeling Day, which was I think that was the middle of September. Can My you believe God. that? God, no, I can't. I know. Well, it, it this time has gone by so fast. I think the New Orleans trip kind of threw a wrench. In oh, my plans. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I was yeah. saving money for that, and and actually, one of the guys from Carolina Trails Off Road, um, he's the guy that Mitchell. He's the one who spotted me up that really scary incline. He's the best spotter ever. Anyway, he's in the military, and I think he's serving overseas right now. Anyway, he's on Facebook a lot, and he was talking about he has been to um, Windrock, which is an off-road park in Tennessee, and he's talk about he's talking about going again at the end of April, and I so am going to go with him. 
because there are Jeep Badge of Honors there. And oh. I hear a lot of people talking about Windrock Off-Road Park. So anybody out there listening, um, I would love for you to join us. If you want to, go over to my Facebook page and start following me. And um, we'll be posting up stuff. And he's probably going to post it in the Carolina Trails Off-Road Events um, section of Facebook. So um, that's the the big plan. And, of course, I'll get to Roush Creek one time this winter. Um, oh, wow. And, yeah, at least. Tammy, that's an eight and a half hour drive. I was oh, gonna, I know. I was just yep. going to say that's probably at least what seventy bucks every time you go and in, in fuel. Oh, oh, to Roush. Oh, this Creek. one will be a little more yeah. expensive than that. Yeah, five hundred and fifty-one miles uh, each way. Right. So no, that's I mean to be Rush. No, I mean to Rush. Rush Creek. Creek is four hours, so eight-hour uh, mm-hmm. round trip. So it's that's yeah. at least a tank of gas, right? Oh, I I probably do two tanks of gas yeah, when I go to Rush Creek. Yeah. And then plus I have to pay the Roush Creek fees, and so it costs Are, me. Did you drop? Did you mention that you're part of the Jeep Talk Show? You're a, a did valued you mention host. That you're kind yeah. of a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> I and I wear my shirt that says I'm kind of a big deal, but yeah, no. Um, and then I still want to get to a flagpole knob, which I mean, it's not. It's just kind of a dirt road, um, but I it's on a mountaintop and you can see Virginia and West Virginia and it's a really beautiful site. And um, I need to get back there too. But because you're not, will, not in Virginia and West Virginia. That's why it's a beautiful site. I guess. <laughs> God, even <laughs> that friends for the show. a four hour drive. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That one's, um, do you not, do you not have anything within a couple hours of you? Well, you got that one uh, place that's a dirt road of 30 minutes away, right? Yeah. And Frederick, the Frederick watershed. <laughs> yeah. No, off-roading. No, anywhere it's two and a half to three hours is the closest, My which goodness. is Roush Creeks is about, about three hours. Well, two it's, and a half. it's like here, Josh, I have to drive at least an hour to, to go yeah. off road. Well, I mean, you know, an hour, hour and a half, that, that, that's, that's, that's kind of what I would consider to be expected, but a three yeah. or a four hour drive. I mean, to me, I mean, that's like driving from Portland to Seattle. I mean, that's, that's, you're crossing yeah. a state, you know, I mean, that, that is, that is interstate travel, you know, at that point. And, and well, I mean, to this flagpole knob, but that's, that's clearly a, a, a you know, a state interstate travel, but right. um, I mean, nonetheless, uh, just, I mean, I got to give like, credit to you. If you're, if you're a yeah, Jeeper, a diehard Jeeper and you're out, you know, once or twice a month and you have to drive three or four hours or more to go wheeling hats off to you, brother or sister. Yeah. It's, and you know, when you have a family who doesn't, you know, care to go sit in their Jeep with you. Not that you're you complain. Know, <laughs> no, I don't, and I don't, I don't mind, <laughs> and I don't mind going by myself. It's, you know, actually, it's a longer I don't drive have, by yourself. Right. Yeah. It is, it's just really hard. I'm surprised and, we don't have a listener in, uh, in Maryland that, uh, oh, wouldn't want to go with you. W- yeah. Well, there's Nate. Nate goes with me when he can. A proper listener. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was, I, actually, I, I, I was actually, I was actually thinking, love, Nate, much love. I was actually <laughs> thinking of a, a a lady jeeper or a wannabe lady jeeper that might oh, want to yeah. might want to experience oh. the off road life before they you know took their jeep off the road or maybe even purchased one. So uh, that'd be a great opportunity, and you could have you could be the calm one and listen to them scream and and cuss <laughs> because of uh, wanting well, fear of dying. I kind of yeah, I kind of did that during Women's Wheel and Day when um, we trail guided. Um, a bunch of women who have never been off-roading. That was a really cool experience. I can see Tammy in five years uh, trying to train, help, uh, help help bring women into the fold, and, uh, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're uh, oh, my God, are you sure? And she's just, like, suck it up, pansy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Put your big no, it's, girl it's, panties on. <laughs> it's interesting you, you mentioned, like, training and, and, uh, and women and, and stuff like that because I had a coworker, he, uh, a former uh, fellow Jeeper, he, he kind of got out of the lifestyle a little bit uh, uh, due to some, some uh, family issues and whatnot. But um, they recently got a, uh, a new Forerunner uh, as a family vehicle and fully loaded TRD package, the whole, whole kit and caboodle. And he came up to me the other day and asked me, he's just like, hey, when do you plan on taking the Jeep out again? I'm like, you know, I don't know, probably, you know, probably after the holiday and stuff like that. But and, uh, and he's like, well, you know, I want to I want to set something up with you because the wife wants to learn how to wheel. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, oh OK. Uh, well, why aren't you going to teach her? 
<laughs> he's like, like, I think you're going to be a better, you know, a better uh, instructor, you know, for right. you know, he, he only, he only oh, wheeled for a know. few years and, and then, you know, moved on. Um, but, uh, but he, you know, he wants me to, you know, go up into the woods with him and, and take her out on some trails and get into some situations to where, you know, she's going to need some instruction and get in some, you know, specific scenarios where she has to do specific things because she unto herself has, and now this is years after the fact, suddenly uh, has demonstrated a, a desire to learn how to uh, wheel off road. Um, which is very interesting because, you know, she had absolutely no, wanted nothing to do with it back when, when he and I were, were much more avid together, uh, when he was jeeping, you know, almost on a biweekly basis, uh, she wanted to have nothing to do with it. Now that they've got this, you know, brand spanking new forerunner, I'm like, really, you want to take the $60,000 oh, SUV no. up into the woods and, uh, you know, possibly damage it <laughs> yeah. okay i'll be happy to take you up there <laughs> so uh we'll probably set something up here after the after the first of the year and uh and get up there and uh and get into some uh get into some crazy stuff so it'll probably be probably be some snow up there likely will be some snow up there i and, love uh, I'll uh, do some uh, do some good recovery situations i love hearing this because this is exactly what we try to do and uh, one mm-hmm. of the main reasons tammy's here is that it's not anything that uh anybody can't do uh you exactly just, you know so it, it's if wonderful that it's do it, anyone can same do thing it, right? here <laughs> if i can do it anybody else can do it but it's 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 viewed by a lot of people as a a man thing to do and uh, that image is changing and hearing this, well, what you're saying, Josh, means that, that this is actually becoming something that is like, well, I can do that. I'd like to do that. I'd like to know how to do that. And that's the way it should be. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Tony. It's, it's that, you know, well, I, I think I can do that. I would like to do that. And <laughs> that's showing that interest and, and getting that curiosity and then having the confidence to then pursue it. And that, I just love that aspect of it. So you turn the steering wheel, you press that little skinny yeah. pedal, and you press the <laughs> the other pedal to stop. I, yeah, I can do that. You know, it, that's Push really the button that says four low. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, think about it. It's you know, and of course, that's one thing men do. They make things you know very manly, and you know, you oh, you got to be a man to do, to do that. Yeah, you know, it's it's really the same thing. We press on the little skinny pedal. We press on the brake pedal. And we spit. So if you, if you throw in the mm-hmm. spitting, then you got it. <laughs> they got it. I there can you spit. go. That's lesson 101. So, yeah, it's cool stuff on the radar and uh, and a bunch of other. And, oh, hey, um, uh, speaking of uh, stuff coming uh, down the pike here, we've got um, a, a certain package arriving tomorrow, actually a couple few days early, uh, earlier than expected. Now, we had a voicemail that we played, uh, was it last week, the week before? about a certain um, uh, sized uh, gong that I'm going to be receiving. <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. We got a voicemail about that, uh, which uh, I've, I've pretty much chalked up to be a, uh, a nice little uh, a joke from a fan of ours. But, uh, but nonetheless, thank you for that. I, I and, get the uh, feeling you're going to squeal like a little girl. <laughs> oh, no, I love getting stuff in the mail. Anytime the, brand, uh, the, the brown Santa shows up, uh, I, I'm, I'm a happy camper. So. That just doesn't but sound yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> it's like wait a minute oh, that, that might not have come out it sounds yeah. racist every time i hear it it sounds racist <laughs> uh, can, we, can we say you that? know what i mean <laughs> can we say no, that means uh, that i might i might be uh heading up in the woods as early as saturday so uh, i'll be uh, i'll be looking forward to that excellent i got nothing planned i mean there's lots of things i, I can do to the jeep I, I got actually several jeeps to do things to uh one of the uh u-joints on the um passenger side axle on uh, my wife's tj is has a slight movement to it mm. uh so i ordered some uh uh what is it uh 760 u joints uh they actually got a got a pair of them from uh, amazon for 43 bucks spicer spicer yes oh, very good yep absolutely and uh so i'm a uh i'm off for a week so uh starting uh you know monday through friday i will be off that week but of course lucky, oh, lucky yeah you. so uh, you know you get vacation you use it or lose yeah. it so uh, I, hopefully I'll uh, get out there and uh, pull those axles out and replace those uh, those U joints and uh, uh, don't want to call uh, from the wife saying the oh, uh, no <laughs> the Jeep is making a horrible noise and it gets worse as I try to drive faster. Oh. <laughs> and I can only turn one way. <laughs> <laughs> it turns the other way by itself. So uh, yeah, nothing nothing a lot planned, but uh, just going to take a little time off and. Uh, get ready for next week's show and have a, a lot of fun listening to all the voicemails we're going to receive uh people trying to win the uh arrow x uh light cover well you guys want to join in on the campfire side chat crack a beverage pull up a chair join us and have some fun 
Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and find out all the ways you can reach out to us and join in on the fun. Now let's get to some events from around the world and maybe in your neck of the woods and let us know about an event that you have going on or that you know about. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. Click and fill out our wheeling wear form and uh, that information goes straight to us hosts and we get it straight onto the air. Coming up on the 18th of January through the 20th, all weekend long, we have the 21st Annual Superstition Mountain Run hosted by San Diego Four-Wheelers. And uh, this is going to be a good one, guys. Uh, We also have the Corva, C-O-R-V-A, or California Off-Road Vehicle Association, presenting their 22nd Annual Truck Haven Challenge, happening January 19th. And this is a big one, folks, the Car Off-Road Race. This you, You guys know about some of the other ones. This is one of the ones that have been around for a very long time. Very, very big. Happening in Peru, January 6th through the 17th. This is a very big event. And we'll have links to these events as well as any others that we've ever mentioned. For more information on these or any of the other events that we've ever mentioned here on the show, well, just go over to jeeptalkshow.com and uh, click the notes for this episode. You can find out all the links to get all the information you want. That's it for the show for this week, fellow Jeeper. Until next week, don't forget we're on Twitter and tweeting all the time, so be sure to follow us at Jeep Talk Show. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. Jingle bells, nothing. I could hear that fat bastard coming a half mile away. Of course, I was, if I was being whipped as hard as them poor reindeer were, I'd probably make an awful racket too. Still, I think there'd be some sort of common decency. I mean, it was 3 o'clock in the morning, for crying out loud, and my hangover was not prepared for his particular level of merriment. I'm guessing since 2010. Hey, not ready for the show to be over? Well, we can understand that. Now you can hear more Jeep Talk Show goodness by installing the Jeep Talk Show app. Just go to Apple or Google Store, search for Jeep Talk Show, and hit that install button. Not only will you have the latest episode, but our entire library of shows. Plus, and only on the Jeep Talk Show app, you'll have access to bonus content. Look for the bonus content icon on the Jeep Talk Show app and hear what goes on after the interview and after the show.